You're simplifying concepts with pop science destiny. Your explanation of mRNA vaccines are a wholly lot more complicated, especially in cases with experimental vaccines. Cool. What do you think I'm missing, cool cat? What do you want me to say? I, I have enough of an understanding to tell you how it works from start to finish. I'm not going to be able to tell you, like, I guess what, how, like, an individual thing, thing what, what, what part of it do you think I'm missing? That's relevant to the conversation. Bro, you link with Sneeko, you get little Sneekos. Pretty sure the mRNA vaccines were also found to cause clots. I never heard anything about the mRNA being linked to clots. Maybe they have been, but I haven't I haven't seen that. I haven't heard that yet. Has an off-target effect of mRNA been observed in experiments in the lab? A lot of a lot of experiments in a lab are a lot of experiments in a lab don't necessarily translate to an entire in vivo environment inside of a human body's environment. In vitro allows us to manipulate either individual cell lines or environments inside of a petri dish that wouldn't exactly match the environment inside of a human body. This is one of the big problems initially with ivermectin. Ivermectin was shown to be effective initially um, in treating COVID-19, in treating uh, the in treating COVID-19 because it inhibited, I think, the replication of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in vitro. But the problem with that in vitro um, the problem with that in vitro experiment was that the concentrations of, no, it was this wasn't for ivermectin. This was for hydroxychloroquine, I think. I think it was for hydroxychloroquine. The problem is that the concentration of hydroxychloroquine, no, I think it was for ivermectin. The concentration of ivermectin that you needed in that Petri dish was like a thousand times higher than what you would ever need or what you would ever normally have by taking ivermectin as a drug. You need to take like a thousand times like the recommended safe dose in order for it to happen. But people would take that in vitro meaning just in a petri dish they would take that experiment they go oh look ivermectin will cure um covid 19 ignoring that there wasn't a single in vivo uh like an actual in a person study for it ever or there, there was no epidemiological data to support that uh conclusion either right in vitro is good because in vitro can allow you to understand and study the underlying mechanisms of things like oh if you do this this will happen because of this reason but that doesn't necessarily translate to a human environment for a whole multitude of more complicated reasons uh Okay, hey, what do you want? Metaverse, you're here. Are you ever going to go over the Robert Malone claims? I feel like that's where a lot of the stupid mRNA claims can come up. No, not anymore. Nobody uses his claims anymore. Uh, anti vaxxers is always hot from claim to claim to claim to claim to claim. The, the Robert Malone shit is old. I don't think anybody cares about anything he said anymore. Almost everything that he said was wrong. He's not the founder of mRNA vaccines. Um, almost every cause for concern or every worry that he gave, I think, is outdated and nobody cites them anymore. Like, the Robert Malone dude is a scam artist. He, like, he's a sham wizard. Um, the guy's a loser and a dipshit. If I ever had the chance to demand, I'd take him up on it. One million percent. Ninety-nine percent of what that guy said about mRNA vaccines or vaccines in general, even we were stupid. Like that Joe Rogan appearance was was wild. He was just on Rogan again. Oh, nice. Oh, well, maybe then we'll refresh on all the retarded shit he has to say about anything relating to medicine. Okay, Metaverse B admin, going once. Your thing is muted. I don't know if you. More in-depth definitions of medical terms in vitro and vivo, please go Google them. The problem here is there have been no studies critically analyzing whether there have or haven't been off-target effects in vivo as a result of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. Why haven't they? They probably have been. That's probably part of like the normal studies that they do, my dude. Like you, it's always like finding some new esoteric term, and it's like, well, have you guys looked for like the uh, astrological uh, uh, anima cyta effect or whatever? Why have there been no studies involving that? Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. <clears throat> over like two billion people, I think, have taken the um, over two billion people, I think, have taken the. Um, uh, have taken shots so far. Like, where where are all of these negative effects? When are they going to happen, right? Yeah, they're all dying suddenly on the field, true.
Okay, the metaverse guy doesn't know how to work his shit, I guess. Just FYI, the person talking about off-target effects doesn't make any sense at all. It literally wouldn't make sense to study unless we believe mRNA is being incorporated into the genome. Gotcha. Wouldn't long-term effects be hard to study in such a short term? True, but there's just no reason to believe that there are long-term effects of these vaccines. But I mean, they'll still watch populations. And I mean, there's a reason why, and it's funny because it bit them in the ass trying to be responsible. But like one of the reasons why you've seen the VAERS database explode so much is because people were trying to keep track of like side effects from these vaccines. That's why the VAERS database reporting was so heavily encouraged by medical professionals after these vaccines went out. But now most people don't even know how the VAERS database works and they're citing it like it's like 100%. Like if somebody puts something in the VAERS database, that means that they absolutely 100% died from a side effect of a vaccine or some shit like this. Um, oh, dude. Dude, 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 uh, dude, dude, come on, dude. Um, we, you, you can't, like, they can't say, we know 100% of the side effects 10 years from now. How are you going to know that? Yeah, okay, so no, no It's not going to be 10 years. Like, I feel like these guys are such a massive cope. First of all, 10 years? 10 years? But like, even after 10 years, they're just like, oh, well, I don't trust it because Fauci, you know, I saw him like scratch his ass once and sniff his finger, so I don't trust anything. Like, it's, there's always like some new stupid excuse. Always. There always is. Uh... First, we can't know so that. So then all I'm saying no, wait, watch, is... Watch, watch. You can't know that. Okay. But watch. Um, so I have a whole chapter called Risk and Reward in the book, which is tries to get you have myocarditis gonna take years to show up that's not true myocarditis is a reaction that shows up pretty quickly it's an inflammation response what do you mean it would take years to show up that's not true sensitize people to when they make a decision what kind of risk are they absorbing relative to what they're rejecting okay and we're not very good at that at probability and statistics or analyzing that's why tv commercials trying to sell you a product don't just show you a data they show a person speaking of the effectiveness of the product a single person i lost 50 pounds the testimony of an individual should be irrelevant to you relative to the entire set of people who have done it and you want to look at those statistics but we're not good at that and advertisers know that so they show the testimony of an individual, which is hugely potent. Destiny, wrong. It does take years. Most people aren't even aware that they have it. That's just not true, my dude. Most myocarditis is acute. It's gone in a week or two. It's not going to take years for it to show up. You're developing chronic... I mean, in exceptionally rare cases, I guess you could, but chronic myocarditis is an incredibly rare thing. You're not, you're not, you're not just going to... That, that's not like a bunch of people are walking around with, with massive inflammation or even minor inflammation of the heart for years and years. I have no idea. That's not true. Destiny, zero knowledge on this topic? Okay. Oh, dude, the bot talking points. Holy shit, you guys are npc on the ass, dude. In a civilization where we don't think statistically, we think about eyewitness testimony on something, and somehow that is, is raised to a very high level of influence on our decisions. What I'm saying is, you're not conf your decision point is not, I'm not gonna take the virus because five years, 10 years, I don't if only 1% gets it, that's still an insane amount of people. <laughs> I guarantee you that if I went through your Twitter feed, I bet you've got like a COVID, COVID only kills 1% of people. It's not even that big of a deal. Like, bro, I guarantee you, you've made the exact opposite thing in terms of the risks associated with COVID. But for like some inflammation from a vaccine, you're like, it's 100% over. Like, dude, get, get out of here, man. Kill me. I don't know what effective sentence. Some may, though. Some may not be comfortable. Let me that. finish the sentence. You, you. Okay, so you can say, I don't want to take the virus because five or 10 years from now, I don't want to take the virus. It could be a side effect that we don't see, which is a possibility. Hold on. I'm trying to make a statistical point here, okay? If you say, I don't want to take the virus because it hasn't been tested for five years and there could be some long term side effect. You keep saying the mRNA vaccine doesn't mutate the DNA, but you keep ignoring that the spike protein was designed for that specific purpose. No, it wasn't. Mr. D. Jonzo, do you want to hop into Discord? That's not true. None of none of that even made sense. Chronic myocarditis is common? No, it's not. Myocarditis
pericarditis and pericarditis are, are um, is it pericarditis? I don't think that's right. Hold on. It's, mm, it is pericarditis, sorry. Myocarditis and pericarditis are rare side effects. They're already rare. Most of the time when you have them, they're short lasting, acute. So even when you get them, it's not likely to be chronic. Wait, where's the one guy? They're talking about the spike protein and reverse DNA. Where are you at? Pop into Discord, my boy. Unless you're black, in which case I'll say my fella. <sighs> that worries me, okay? Well, hold on. Listen, if he's black, I don't want to call him my boy. That might be racist, okay? I'm going for the optics W here, okay? I'm trying to try to cover all my bases. In that same moment, mm -hmm. there's the risk factor of you getting COVID. Sure. Okay? Unvaccinated. 80, at one point, 87% of everyone dying in the hospital of COVID... Was unvaccinated? Was unvaccinated. True. Okay. So... Your risk choice is, I'm not going to take it because maybe somewhere down the line something will happen that we don't know what that is, or I will risk getting COVID, and if I get COVID, depending on your age and other things, there's a best kind of hypothesized cause of vaccine-induced myocarditis, spike protein being exported from cells with circulation, level circulated spike protein is super higher and effective in infection than from vaccine because, of course, yeah, I heard that, but I think they were pulling blood or they were testing people that were developing myocarditis after the vaccine, and it seemed like those people had... Um, uh, the spike protein circulating in the blood. So I think the idea, the worry was that, um, or, or the hypothesis is that you're more likely to develop myocarditis if somehow uh, post-injection, the uh, spike protein, they're not staying local, I guess, and they're somehow like circulating throughout the body. And then if you circulate throughout the body, you're going to cause like inflammation on the body. One of those inflammations could happen in the uh, myocardium, myocardium, what the fuck is it called? Um, and then that could be where the myocarditis is coming from. That was the one, one big study was recently published on that, I think a week ago. The three percent chance of me dying in the hospital. That's your choice. Yes. Yes. But what I see people doing is they focus on one thing. If the vaccine doesn't stop transmission, you're talking about compounded myocarditis risk from the vaccine as well as from contracting virus itself. This is never considered a risk benefit. Of course it's considered, but the consideration is low because your events for myocarditis from vaccine or is like seven out of a hundred thousand. It's incredibly rare. It is incredibly rare. And that's the foundation of their decision. But rather than the other chance, and what happens if you get COVID? Now you get long COVID, now you don't have taste buds for, for two years or whatever it is for long COVID. Yeah. Um, you're on a ventilator in the hospital, possibly dying. Like what, where is the, so I looked every day, when I, once a week, I looked at the statistics. Mm -hmm. How many people are getting COVID? What's the rate? What's the rate of hospitalization? What's the rate of deaths? Where is it by state? I had to look at it. I, and, my and, my and, board forced me to look. We're in the business. As we have they to should. Yeah, of course. Because it's data. Yeah, on, I agree. On risk factors. The, the risk of people's lives. Okay, for so, sure. so nothing is ever zero risk. Yeah, there's a risk that you'll grow a third arm in 10 years because the virus mutates within you. Should, what, should, the individual, should the individual not have the right to say, I don't want to take it because that's... You don't have the right to contend... If you say the vaccine is potentially dangerous, you have to say COVID is dangerous. No. I don't think these people will admit it. I don't think they'll admit it. But I think most of these people in my YouTube chat, I think they think that the vaccine is more dangerous than COVID. I don't think they'll admit it if you ask them, but I do believe that they think that. They think the vaccine is more dangerous than COVID is. Oh. Contaminate someone else. So if you don't want to get who shot, who says that though? But who says that? It's a it's a it's a social contract in a modern civilization. I don't have a public health. I don't have the right to contaminate someone else. In what do you mean? Like so? What do I do? Stay it, home or, all day? Yeah, or, or go to the beach. Yeah, you stay you stay away from other old people who you know. But closed. you stay away but, from people but, who are compro who are that, immune compromised. But, so so, yeah. so Neil. So for me, I'm, I'm asking you because I'm I want to know how. Wait, did he call him Neil? Wait, did he say that or did I? How you process this as a oh, guy Neil. that's well read, smart. I process the data and the data. And, the but data they, are, we didn't have enough data though. No, no, we didn't have enough data. At to, any given moment, yeah. there's data for you to make a decision. 
at any given moment, sure. the data is constantly getting better and better. Yeah. All right. So, all right. At any given moment, you say to yourself, okay, um, uh, what happens to me if I get COVID? There's a chance I'll get long COVID. Uh, I'm certainly out for at least a week. Uh, and there's a chance I'll be hospitalized. And there's a chance I'll die. Mm -hmm. I take the vaccine. It mitigates this basically entirely removing the chance that I'm going to die, essentially, at my age group. And I will accept the risk that in five years I'll grow a third arm. That's the kind of decision-making that I make. Now, that's just for me, but on top of that, if my workplace says, we don't want you coming in unless you are vaccinated and you might lose your job, I would say, why? Oh, because you could contaminate someone else introducing a problem in their own health profile. That's the public contract. That's why workers wash their hands in the restaurant bathrooms by law. Yes, they are required to do so because you don't want poop germs in your dinner that they're preparing because our evidence showed that that's one of the greatest places you can spread disease is in a restaurant with a central kitchen. So these are, these are the, this is the, now, you want a world where you can do whatever you want and have it influence other people. I'm not saying that. I'm you kind of are. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is the following. Like, okay, for example, statistics. Uh, you know, have you seen the documentary Died Suddenly? Have you looked no, at it? Okay. No. Okay. Well, it's an where, interesting where, one. It, it's on, it's on uh, I don't know where it's at. You can find it I'll somewhere online. It. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's got 30 million views. I think it's worth watching. Actually, would be curious to know what you say about it once you watch it. Mm hmm the statistic then showed, like, pre-COVID, you know, 29 people, athletes in Europe died suddenly from heart failure, pre-COVID, pre-taking the mRNA vaccine, okay? Post-taking the mRNA vaccine last year, 1,500 people suddenly had heart failures in Europe, and two-thirds died. That's documented. That's not like it's a hypothetical, right? Okay. You read statistics like that, then one has the right to say. Just to be careful, just to be just to be careful. Be careful how you speak information. So, so you are describing two events. Okay, you're, you're describing events that had a temporal relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, before you've established a causal relationship. Just be clear that that's one hundred percent. I'm not doing okay. that. All I'm doing is the follow. -up. Here's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If 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 uh, if somebody all of a sudden starts having a breakout, okay, a breakout of what? Meaning their skin starts breaking yeah, out. Uh -huh. You're 26 years old. Mm -hmm. You never had a breakout. All of a sudden you start breaking out, and the doctor says, "Listen, man, what have you been doing differently?" Well, listen, for the first time in my life, six weeks ago, I started doing Deca mm -hmm. steroids. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, that's why it you're. It, it, it implicates it, right? Okay, hey, if somebody all of a sudden, you know, is having a hard time sleeping at night, yeah, man, I'm having a very hard time. Sleeping. So I mean, let's watch your diet. Well, then they notice at 1030 at night, you're having iced tea and, you know, lemonade and you add it with this. Well, listen, if we've been doing it for six weeks, that's why you have an hard time. Just drop that. Don't drink that after two o'clock. I'm just making, you know, saying, but all I'm saying is what I want to know is I want to put everything on the table mm -hmm. versus saying, no, no, no. There's one thing we can't put on the table. And that's the cause of the vaccine. There is a, no way there could be any negative impact because of the vaccine. That's no, no one to Chris. has ever said that ever about any vaccine. So if you say that, then the question then becomes back for you to right. say, when when COVID first got started, I invited so many doctors to come in to talk about COVID. And then I invited people That's from government. both sides. I want both sides. I invited people from both sides. Do you know which side would never come? The left. The side that was for vaccine would never, ever come because they thought they were above the average person that they know and the rest of us are dumb. So because of that, they're not willing to come and sit down with scientists. I think that's arrogant. So to me, when I ask you scientific debate, I'm not telling you I'm, I'm a scientist. Hey, let me debate with you because I'm smarter than you. I'm not a scientist. I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm a business let, guy. Let's, let's do a hypothetical uh, scenario. Hypothetics are, um, let's assume an actual cause and effect has been get, has been established okay. in these in sure. this case. Sure. Which it's not, I have to see the film to know. I'll I, send I don't it know that it, there's yeah. a cause and effect other than a coincidence in time relative to other things mm -hmm. that people might have been mm -hmm. doing. By the way, alcohol consumption went up during COVID significantly, okay? And alcohol is implicated in heart disease. So depression, anxiety, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. people staying at home, yeah. kids, opioids, addicts, okay. addiction. Okay. So those staying at home wasn't the best uh, no, decision either. What I'm saying yeah. is 
if after the vaccine is available, more people die of heart failure over a time where alcohol consumption went up as did that depression. That could be an option. That's, yeah. that, that's right. Very good. That, that's, that's all I'm saying here. But let's give it to you that the vaccine caused this. Let's just say that, okay? Yeah. And add it all up, and you got, what was it, 1,500 post-vaccine? 29 to 1,500. Oh, 20, 29 to 1,000. Yeah. Thousands of deaths, yeah. let's say, okay? Let's say 10,000, even. Let's just do that, okay? Um, all right. Uh, you can estimate how many deaths the vaccine saved during COVID, okay? Because you can look at the death numbers drop off as people got vaccinated. It's in the tens of millions. Again, you can make a decision. Uh, do I not want to die from COVID at this rate that occurred in this world? Mm -hmm. Or do I not want to die from this complication from the vaccine itself? Yeah. The, the so make your decision. And so you'll say, I might be in that 1500, so I'm not going to think. Then you get COVID and die from COVID, right? The, so you just make the decision. But you know what I would say to that? Well, you know what I would say? At least I got to choose. Here's what I would say to that. I would say, perfect. Let me take the risk. And yeah. thank you for giving it to me that way as, versus telling as, me it's one or the other, which is how I was presented. As informed fully about what the risks are. But like I said, as a species, we're not very good at thinking statistically about it. We're just not. And when we want to, we believe we're going to be the exception. And look at the people betting on lotteries, you know, they think they're going to win. But, but, but for me, but for me, like, you know, the, the moment they started uh, saying you have to put on cigarettes, this, the risk of this, the risk of heart failure, cancer, this, this, that. And if you still want to smoke cigarettes, guess what? You, you got a risk if you smoke cigarettes, you may get lung cancer, right? Hey, if you eat this, if you do this, if you do that. You know, we've denied your admission to the bar. There's a cost to that because it's a public health issue. And so, right. You are free to smoke a cigarette, but not in my establishment, by law. Not not in your establishment. By law. By law. Correct. No problem. Right. Totally fine. But that's an example. But if you want to smoke cigarettes contract. outside, Neil, you can. Let, let, let me, and you can live on the beach unvaccinated. That's fine. Neil, let me ask you this. So, Neil, so what state would you say was the most responsible during COVID? State. I don't state. Know. I don't know. I okay. Never, I never looked. So if, if, if you're a stats guy. I have no guy, idea. Actually. Okay. I'm, I'm a stats guy as well. I like stats, but I'm, I'm more financial. I'm not like, you know, you, but you, I understand what you're saying. Stats stats. And I'm a baseball guy, so I like stats. Okay. I'm all about stats. I love okay. baseball. So if we look at the stats, the, the media made Florida seem the most irresponsible state. That's what the media made it look. Okay. We're in Florida right now. You, you, do, you guys do have kind of a bad rap bad reputation on a lot of stuff okay sure so say so, and by the way i've lived in california 24 years five years in texas two years in florida okay just so you know my background that's right okay. 10 years in iran two years in germany that's kind of my background mm -hmm. a couple years in the military but if we say hey if we look at the data the most irresponsible state was florida you would have heard many times news telling you that when i go to california and i would say i'm in florida I was, oh my god you're in florida how am i it's horrible it's but you know what i realized here's what i realized mm -hmm. if the state of florida is so bad why did the nba during black lives matter host the playoffs in florida and the bubble if florida yeah, I, thought is, they had, I thought they created a bubble for themselves well why did they come here they could have done it in texas texas got plenty of places they could do it and why did they do it here i don't know they, but the point is they, what is his argument i thought you said you were a stats guy now we're going on where the nba chooses to host their finals they felt Safest. Wait, I'm not going to use the NBA as a measure. Of yeah, why would we use the NBA? I, 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 I give you an A lot of the <laughs> Super Bowl was here. Yeah. I'll give you another one. Pro vaccine AOC for vacation. She came to Miami. People <laughs> from New York and California were part. Maybe they Miami. have family. During COVID, when everybody was looking for a home during Christmas, where to go to? You couldn't go to Colorado. You couldn't go to Lake Tahoe because it sucked. You had all these other choices. Everybody came to Florida. I'm not going to judge just the safety. Though. Of a, I, I can't use that as, as a statistics of safety. I can't. Uh, I, I don't care who chooses where to vacation. I care what your death rates yeah. are, what your vaccination rates are, what your hospitalization rates are. That that would be an objective measure from state to state. Where What state are you most likely to die in from COVID? That's a statistic I would pay attention to. What state has the least hospital beds to accommodate those who are sick from COVID, even if they're not going to die from COVID? I would want to know that. I'm not going to 
base a decision on whether the NBA chose to put their bubble in the state. Well, statistically, in New York and California does not look good, statistically. New York and California, and they're supposed to be the most responsible ones. The New York one is always a red herring. Um, I wonder where California falls on all the deaths. Deaths per 1 million population. California is at 41, bro. So California is in the top 10 states or the bottom 10 depending on, for deaths. How are you out here saying Florida that's ranked 12 in actual deaths per million? How are you gonna say Florida did great and California is not looking good at rank 41? New York is at 15. Even New York didn't do as bad as Florida. And they're the ones that got in the beginning hard. Those two states didn't look good. All I'm saying is from my end, in a space where I sit there and I listen to you and I learn, I say, oh my gosh, okay, I had no clue about that. That was brilliant. That's interesting. Let me go research. Let me go look at this. I'm a guy that likes debate of experts in two different sides and let them make the argument. And I'm mature enough to know the better salesman doesn't necessarily have the better That's argument. Good. But it's, let me just say that I'm. there's nothing I've said in the last half hour that is a debating point. All I'm telling you, well, you, you can debate whether you should still be able to work and put other workers at risk for not having vac vaccinated. That's a, you can debate that. Yeah. In the context of public health, that's a risk factor that we don't want to introduce to other people because of your decisions. That's a public health issue that's been going on basically for a hundred and something years since, you know, the, uh, the, the, what's the, who's the woman who, uh, Oh, your mom. Famous your mom. Case. It's your mom. A person who spread. Uh, what's it? Oh shit! I know who he's talking about. There's a woman that had like, was it polio or something? She had a horrible disease, but she continued to work in a oh typhoid Mary. Yeah. Apparently, she had like very like rare antibodies. She had like complete immunity to this. It didn't bother her at all. But she kept working as a kitchen, and she infected like a hundred people with typhoid fever. Um, but she didn't get sick from it personally, I think. She was an asymptomatic carrier of the pathogenic bacteria Salmonella typhi. She was the first person in the United States as an asymptomatic, identified as an asymptomatic carrier. She persisted in working as a cook and thereby exposed others to disease because of that. She was twice forbid, twice forcibly quarantined by authorities, eventually the final two decades, eventually for the final two decades of her life. She died after 30 years in isolation. Jeez. Uh, what what is that case recently? No, no, no hundred years ago. Thinking of. Oh, it, it created a whole wave of, of sanitation about. rules and things for public health sake. Mm -hmm. But but anyway, the, the the point is, it's I want to make sure you know you can focus on the fifteen hundred people who died after the vaccine. Mary Mallon. Um, You're talking about the history of typhoid fever. Yeah, typhoid. Yeah. Typhoid Mary. Yes, yeah, thank you. Typhoid thank you. Mary. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know her last name. Yeah, I, I thought typhoid was her first name. Typhoid Mary. So, so it's simply a matter of if you're saying you don't want to be in the 2000, whatever the number is, who died after the vaccine from heart failure at the peak of your physical career, not totally necessarily factoring in all the other abuses that went on over that time that may have contributed to it. Instead, you want to take the risk of COVID and not be one of the Cal million I, we'll people see. <laughs> who would have died and didn't. <laughs> that might be where I right? go with this. We'll so, see. This so looks, I just want you I to have get this the set up. statistics in front of you. And it seems to me. But it feels like I'm going to need like almost a different ingredient for every single one of these individual modules, which looks cancerous as fuck. Most people would, in most cases, choose the path that reduces their chance of death. But by the way, I don't disagree. I, that's why I'm not debating. I'm no, just saying this, I'm this, putting it out there. But this part of what you're saying, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. This is it's not a matter of being with me. It's just are you with no decision making? But, 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 but what is rational? But she, statistical but this, analysis. But this position is not an arrogant position. This position yeah! is kind of like when you're sitting there and a doctor you tell the doctor, so doc, what do I do? Do I get the surgery? Like we have one of my good friends right now is getting a brain surgery in the next couple of weeks. 
she's she's afraid now she believes in god so faith is kind of i wonder if i could compare this because these are business guys there's something that you know when you're in business you, and i know all of them would intuitively immediately know this concept the worst decision is always indecision right people think that sometimes the worst decision is making a bad decision but more often than not the worst decision is, is to be paralyzed and not make any decision at all when you're investing, oftentimes you've got to make decisions based on limited information. You don't know 100% of everything. Or if you know 100% of everything, you're buying treasury bonds, right? Um, if, you're, if you're making investments, if you do venture capital, if you do any, any type of investing at all, um, especially for these guys that are like in the business of finance, like I'm sure they intuitively know this. You have to make decisions based on limited information. This idea of like wait 10 years for all of the information to come out. Um, I wonder if you presented it to them in like a finance light. Like, well, how do you make decisions around like risky investments and everything? Like, what do you choose to do? Like, I wonder, I wonder if they would evaluate it the same way. Comment or down? But she's afraid, okay? The doctor says, there's a 10% chance you're not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna, for the rest of your life, live having to take that medication with the side effects, or do you wanna do the surgery? The individual is making a decision to get the surgery. She knows the chances is what? 10%. You know what I say to that? Hey, at least I know the risk. Versus, no, if you take this, you won't get anything, propaganda, selling me this. But what's the three things that you say? There's three different types of truth, right? It's objective truth, personal truth, and, and political truth. Exactly. Yeah. That's the Probably one I have a truth. problem with. And I and agree with you. should we all? I, and that's the part I have a problem with. I, I'm, personal truth, let's debate, have fun with it. Great. Let the audience. Yeah, yeah. Personal it. truth. Yeah. You want to debate, debate personal yeah, yeah, truth. Exactly. That's cool. Okay. Kirk or Picard, you know? You yes. Whatever. Yes. Uh -huh. But then a Star Trek reference? <laughs> Dude. Who, who let him in? I'm sorry. <laughs> who let him in? They've been asking that question for years. <laughs> the, the political truth, who I think, is what brought a lot of uh, uh, division yeah. in households, in companies, would. different places. Of course I think that's what happened the last two and a half years, yeah. specifically with that. And you know this, like, you took it, you didn't take it, you're part of a political party. Like, you may be positioning me right statistically, now. Statistically, that's yeah. the correct statement. Yeah, statistically yeah. it was. But yeah. you, you, what was interesting is that people with no college degrees, uh, took the vaccine less than those with bachelor's degrees, but then MBA was the least, which is kind of funny. MBA people took the least amount it's of active percent. Sociological. Yeah, interesting uh, sociology statistics. Statistic. Uh -huh. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, If, if I can't force you to get an abortion, you shouldn't be able to force because me to get Because it's that. not about you. It's about people you interact with. And that's the social contract of public but we health. Don't, we don't even know if the vaccine worked or not at the time. Yes, that's what the trials are, dude. That's why these trials, but are you missing data? Uh, but, but let me ask you a question. Are we saying only one type of scientists are right? No, we're saying. In any other circumstance, if I were to ask you a question, like do, do airbags stop people from dying in car crashes? You would say, yes, of course they do. And then if I were to count you with like, really? So nobody ever dies in a car crash with an airbag? Yeah, obviously some people die. When I say that it stops people from dying, it doesn't mean it's 100%. You would never apply that standard of English anywhere else. The reason why you apply it here, what do you think is the causes? The MR, okay, this is the most frustrating thing. The MRA vaccines aren't even linked. I don't if only 1% gets it, that's still an insane amount of people. <laughs> I guarantee you that if I went... This man is no longer a scientist, he's an ideologue. Oh, I like how I know instantly, but that means that Neil deGrasse Tyson must have been defending vaccines.
wild to at the beginning of COVID to what we know today. What do we know about the vaccine today that we didn't know while we were all testing it in America, taking it? What have we learned now? What do you mean testing it on America? There were tests for before it was released. Nine months right? is not a long time to test. No, but it was tested. Yeah, but nine months, the average is 30, the average is five to 10 years. I mean, nine months is not okay. enough. So you have to, to say, no, you have to ask, hold on. It was tested on, in trials, okay? By the way, I'm, I'm not claiming to be the expert on all this. I read all the same things you have, but I'm a scientist, so I read it as a scientist, okay? There were trials. That's what the point of phase one, two, three trials are all about. They are tested enough to get data on how to then advise the larger population. Yes, it was tested. For you to say it wasn't tested is it is a gap between your awareness and understanding how things work and what actually happened. It was tested. If you want it to be tested on millions of people instead of thousands, you can put in for that. You can say, I don't want this unless it's millions. That's okay. Totally fine with me. Okay. I, I'm okay with that. that but, but the, but, 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 so, so. Based on that, do you say, let's keep testing it while the virus keeps spreading, okay? Right, so this is, this is the contest between the information you have available to you at that moment and what's going on outside the lab. People are dying. Hospitals are becoming overloaded. So do you say, we have good data on the thousand, it's not yet at a million in case you wanted a million. Are you gonna say, let's still do it on another, let's wait another six months so we get another million in here? Will you do that as a public health no, professional? No, I, I would have said, allow the individual to still have a choice that's okay with a thousand instead of a few million. Leave the person have the choice, not force him to take it or else you're gonna get out of the Marines and you've been doing this for 14 years, not force him to take it or else you have to quit your job there's, as a nurse. There's, there's a public it's health force versus there's a choice. Public, there, no. no. Um, there's a public health country. I just, just to reiterate, and it's always, it's so wild to me how many military people got caught up in this whole anti-vax shit, given the military's position on vaccines. Given that when you went into basic, you're like going up and down in a line, getting so many shots, you have no idea what's in any of these things. And the, um, my, and, and, again, and again, just even looking at my own family, um, I've said this before, my dad gets like, it's like 40 to 60% disability is paid out by the Air Force because one of the vaccines that he got, he had a negative reaction that like destroyed part of his shoulder. He can't lift his arm above his head because of the injury. And he gets, he gets paid out um, disability from the Air Force from his retirement. And my parents were still both pro-vaccine. It like wasn't even a question. I got all of my shots going, it was never a question. Even with my dad, having a negative reaction from a vaccine. It wasn't until this COVID shit that now both my parents are like huge anti-vaxxers. It's so wild to me. It's so crazy. Was that the live polio vaccine by chance? I don't know what it was. Um, my parents would have gone into the Air Force. If my dad was in and out in 20, uh, I think he would have been in the Air Force, probably joined in the 90s, 80s? I think he joined in the 80s, I think. 70s? 70s or 80s that you have signed implicitly as a citizen of a country where in part we depend on each other for health, our wealth, our security, and the like. And that contract is in the best scientific evidence available at the time, if you do not get vaccinated, you will put other people in this organization at risk and that organization does not want to take that risk. So you do not have this job anymore if you decline it. So in with any public health decision, there has to be a consequence to you not participating in that social contract. Is it your job? In some cases it was. But no, we're not gonna have the army bust into your home and force a needle into your shoulder. That's not gonna happen. We pretty much did that. Well, only uh, put your job at risk, yes. Yeah, 67% of Americans took the COVID. That's force. That's not a choice. That's a that's a lot of force and, and coercing and pushing going on. But let that, me, that's that's the, yeah, we, you, you can't go to the school unless you're uh, vaccinated I against that's bullshit. months. I think that's bullshit. That's a different me. country. Yeah. 
But okay, that, would you want a country? No, America is supposed to be the one that offers the most freedom. That's what America is supposed to be. Yeah, okay, so watch. So, 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 so for example, so for example, if you use that argument, so uh, somebody may say, well, freedom of choice. I want to choose what I want to do with the body. You're right. What you body? get to what body? If you want to get an abortion, it's your, oh, choice. your own body. Your own body. Sorry. If you want to get an abortion, get an abortion. If I want to get the vaccine, I get to choose. So you can't force. If if I can't force you to get an abortion, you shouldn't be able to force because me to get it's that. not about you. It's about people you interact with, and that's the social contract of public but we health. Don't, we don't even know if the vaccine worked or not at the time. Yes, that's what the trials are, dude. That's why these trials, Have but you, are you missing data? Uh, but, but let me ask you a question. Are we saying only one type of scientists are right? No, we're saying that the system in place, the 16,000 oh, that signed up. No, no, no. The, the system in place to test vaccines, yeah. th there's an entire system that's in place that that with review boards and all of it yeah, and the average that's in place now you can say you can you, what you can say is i i have a better idea than all these review boards and all these agencies and the cdc i have a better idea here's what you should do and that would have made everything better okay you can put forth that idea but what i'm saying is in a case where you can contaminate someone else it's not about you it's about the collective you're assuming health you're assuming you're assuming because somebody can take the vaccine uh won't get covid which by the way i don't need to play the clips for you to see it where everybody said hey if you get it you're not gonna get if you take the vaccine you're not gonna get a rachel maddow joe biden i can give you fauci i can give you i hate i hate that these guys will jump over themselves to explain away the insurmountable amount of evidence of trump saying and doing stupid things but when it comes to like statements on the vaccine these people will hang so hard off of one thing biden said that if you get the vaccine you won't get sick and so what every single person meant was that the vaccine was supposed to have a 100 <laughs>